What's up, super friends? Look what I managed to get my greasy mitts on. The new DC Multiverse Toy Biz Throwback Batman Wave, Poison Ivy, the Joker, and Batman. Why isn't the Riddler here, you might ask? Well, that's because ain't nobody found him yet. But today, we do have these three to look at, so let's give these guys a very brief packaging overview and then yank them all out and have a look at them. Now the packaging for these guys is all exactly the same as the rest of the Blue Box Multiverse. They've got the big window, you can see the stuff on the inside, there's artwork off to the left here, names and appropriate logos and stuff like that. Off to the sides of all the packages, you can see the same images on the sides that we've actually got on the front. The backs of the packaging for all these are exactly the same, except for you've got an image of each of the characters, whichever one's in the package, with a bio for each one, and then they've all got images of the prototype action figures. Actually, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if those are images of the prototypes or if they're computer renderings. Here are the UPC codes, Batman, Joker, and Poison Ivy from top to bottom. And you guessed it, more of the same artwork with logos and stuff on the other sides of the packaging. Great. Now let's open them, starting with Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy comes with her crossbow and a bunch of vines you can stick to her legs and arms. Two that are longer and bigger made to go on her legs, and two that are thinner and shorter that are meant to go on her arms. My other one ripped as I took it out of the package. These things are really, really delicate, so just be careful. Here's a looky at the crossbow, and I think that they actually crafted this just for Poison Ivy. I don't think that they've reused this from anywhere else, so... That's kind of cool. And then we got Poison Ivy. Not great, not terrible. Somewhere kind of in the middle. And, and we'll get into it in just a second as to why I don't think that she's really that hugely successful of a Poison Ivy figure. Starting from the bottom to the top, the colors for Poison Ivy are definitely very striking. They work together. She seems like she would be the wife of the Jolly Green Giant. You know, that guy who tried to get kids to eat their peas? <laughs> Giant. And her basic body proportions, they look pretty good, so there's no complaints there. If I'm being honest, I do kind of wish that there was more sculpted detail to this figure. If I'm being completely honest, I mean, yeah, it's cool that it's up here and down here, but there's no sculpted detail for the top of the boots or for the top of the gloves. I mean, at least it's painted neat. That is, until you get to the face. I want to like it more than I do. I promise you I really, really do, and there are things I like about it. I like the hair, and you got the red with the shading inside of all the hair, and, and all that looks fine. And I suppose the actual sculpt of the face itself looks nice. Where I run into problems is with, I mean, can you see those eyes? What is going on there? This eye here is too close to the nose, while the one on the other side is too far over on her face. They just didn't stamp the eyes on properly. Drat! As for her crossbow, which fits in her hand quite nicely, is it just me or does it happen to be just a little bit too big looking? I don't know. It, to me, it just seems like a tad too, a lot too big. My camera keeps wanting to focus on the stars in the back. My autofocus is all kinds of stupid today. And here's what Poison Ivy looks like when she's wearing her vines around her legs, and I got one on the arm there. I don't have the other vine on her because on account of it being broken. But yeah, that's what we get with Poison Ivy. And next we'll open Batman, whom when out of the package looks like this. This Batman comes with a back grapple and Batarang that are incredibly reminiscent of the original 89 Toy Biz ones. Side by side, you can actually see that they really tried to capture the likeness of the original. The big difference with the Toy Biz one is that the rope from Batman's retractable belt bat rope went up through the back of the Batarang here, and it didn't connect to the bat grapple whatsoever. Not at all. Whereas the new one actually has a little hole in the end where you can stick the peg right in there, and it's as if he shot his Batarang. That's because, and now we come to the figure, the belt for this one does not retract and act as a winch like the original Toy Biz one did. Looking up close at this Batman, you can really tell they're trying to capture that original Toy Biz feel with this one, but 
I think in some ways they get it, and in other ways they kind of miss the mark. However, there is one thing they definitely get right. Using that slimmer male body buck from the multiverse line really actually does capture more of Michael Keaton's Batman physique. He was not a really bulky man. But really, looking up close, the details for this figure are actually quite different than the original. They've tried to capture the look of Tim Burton Batman's original Nike boots here, and they do also look kind of like the original Toy Biz Batman. The belt here is, like I mentioned before, nothing like the original one because, I mean, this doesn't have a, a winch in the inside of it. The muscle structure here is just your basic uh, multiverse mid-size buck, so they didn't actually capture the look of the Toy Biz or the movie here. The gauntlets are all kinds of what the heck. I mean, they're cool looking, but... The original Toy Biz didn't look like this, and neither did the box art on the original Toy Biz Batman either. Looking at the emblem on the bottom of Batman's cowl here, it looks really nice and looks really clean, almost like a sticker. I know it's not, it's actually paint, but it's just, it's that crisp looking. And then the way that the bat scallops here on the front of his cowl actually don't come down like it did in the movie really, or like it did on the Keaton Batman figure, they've really gone with their own thing. And then how it connects in the back, though, that is entirely accurate. This Batman's cape, it's a little bit disappointing to me because, I mean, there's not that much of it, for one. And it's it's like a, a fuzzy material, as you can see here, with it being more smooth on the inside. It just, it's not a bad material. It just, to me, it seems like possibly the wrong material to use for a Keaton Batman cape. And then the face. I know a lot of you who maybe weren't familiar with the original Toy Biz Batman, you might be saying, this doesn't look like Batman at all. Well, it actually does kind of look like the original Toy Biz Batman's face. And giving credit where credit's due, there's no paint slop on mine really whatsoever, aside from that one little tiny nick on the cheek. The articulation for this guy is pretty much the same as the rest of the multiverse figures. I mean, we know what an ab crunch does. We know what these kind of arms do and bicep swivels. He is a little bit different, though, in the sense that for his wrists, he's got rounded swivel hinges, which is cool. Of course, he's got the rest of the basic multiverse articulation with double-jointed knees and rounded hinged ankle pivots. Like, these are kind of cool. you got to see these things up close. They're actually completely rounded and, and you know what I like it I think it works but other than that the articulation is exactly the same as the rest of the multiverse figures if we're gonna do comparisons right side by side the quintessential one will be with the original Toy Biz Batman right off the bat no pun intended, you can see all kinds of differences with these figures. The abs and torso are different. The belts, as mentioned before, are obviously different. The gauntlets are a whole lot different, with the Toy Biz actually being more like the movie. The Toy Biz has trunks, <laughs> which this one doesn't. And the Toy Biz, again, with the boots, actually looks just a little bit more like the movie. As much as I like this version of Batman, I will still take my Toy Biz over this one any day of the week. Here he is next to the Kenner Dark Knight Collection Batman. Certainly one of my most favorite Batmans too. In my opinion, this Batman is actually a lot more like this one than the Toy Biz. Except for the face. That, that is more like the Toy Biz. And finally, here he is next to the NECA Keaton Batman, which in my opinion, is absolutely far superior. Not a terrible figure, absolutely a reasonable throwback to the 1989 Toy Biz line, and definitely one that I'm happy that I own. And now we open the Joker. Who comes with everything you see here? He comes with this Jester Joker cane, which I like a lot. It's got the four dingle bells on the hat that looks like Christmas turkey legs hanging off of his head. Got the skull with the teeth and everything. This is very cool looking. This here's how long it is. I've changed my mind. This is more of a scepter. A royal joker scepter. He also came with a little bitty lapel flower and this gigantic burst of acid that's supposed to pop out the front of it. As well as the lapel flower that I currently have installed on his jacket. If you want Joker to look like he's gonna spray Batman in the face, you just, uh, is hollow on the inside. Well, that's, uh, ain't that a thing. But the figure, absolutely yes. In my opinion, this is the standout figure in the wave, and actually one of the best multiverse figures since the blue boxes started to arrive in stores. 
He's got his Joker shoes and the pants with the pinstripes that have been sculpted on, not just painted on. His vest and his jacket and his little tie that hangs down, everything looks really nice. Very, very Jokerish. I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking that this Joker figure probably shares some body parts with the Alfred figure from the Collect and Connect Killer Croc wave. This figure is so cool looking though. I really like the jacket. This I mean this really does actually look like an Alfred the Butler jacket if I think about it. Not not like a typical Joker jacket, but it really does suit the Joker. I like this a lot. All the buttons have been painted. You got the lapels there, the hemlines down the back. And it's a nice soft rubber, so it, you know if you're posing him and doing stuff, it's not going to get in the way. You've got his vest there, and I don't know what's going on with that white smudge there. I'm going to have to clean that up. You got his little tie hanging down, and oh, I was expecting that to be soft rubber. That that's hard. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Anyhow, a very 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 cool looking figure indeed. And then the face sculpt for this Joker. The face sculpt for this Joker is actually pretty good. It's really it's simple, right? It's the Joker, so it's green, red, and white. But the paint's pretty much gone where it's supposed to. His teeth are white like they're supposed to be. His eyebrows are pretty much where they're supposed to be. His eyes have been stamped on okay. So with this Joker figure, they've done a mighty fine job. And it makes me actually doubly as excited as I already was for the Alfred figure. As for this Joker's articulation, I wasn't planning on covering it in this video, but I think I will. This Joker's head is surprisingly got a ball hinge, which means it can go really far back and forward, which is really kind of cool. He's got an ab crunch, he's got a tornado waist, he's got the shoulders, he's got the bicep swivels, he's got double jointed elbows, which is cool. He's got the rounded hinge wrists, he's got the groin, Oh, this is cool. This is very Jokerish. I could totally imagine him going, -hee 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 -hee. he's got the turny at the top of the thigh, the crunchy crunchy at the double jointed knee, and he has ankle pivots for his feet. So there you have it. This is actually a pretty well articulated Joker figure, which will bump him up in the rankings as far as greatest Mattel Joker figure ever made. Okay, so having reviewed this wave thoroughly and being someone who owned the original Toy Biz figures and was also very excited once these were announced, I could tell you what I think about them. I think that it's a pretty good wave. Not super great, but pretty good, like 7.5 out of 10. The Joker is really, really redeeming this wave because He's an absolutely fantastic figure, and the Batman's not far behind. There are things about him that I don't like that much, like the cape, and I think his head is just a little bit too large and bulbous for the body, but in the end, it's Poison Ivy that, in my opinion, pulls this wave down. Even the idea that they tried to make up for the fact they couldn't give Batman a winch belt, so instead they jury-rigged the Batarang with a rope and the Bat Grapple, cannot redeem this wave from Poison Ivy's terrible eye stamping. I think her crossbow is probably a little bit too big, and I really would have liked to see a little bit more sculpted detail at the top of the boots and the top of the gloves. And if I'm being honest, I think that my Batman has two of the same foot. <laughs> Look! <laughs> so for those reasons, yeah, this wave gets a 7.5 out of 10. I would have liked to see it get at least a 9, but I just can't. But you know what? I'm just one guy. These are just my observations, views, and opinions, and I'm sure you're going to have your own. Hey, leave them down in the comments section below because I'd love to hear from you. If you want to see more of my face and hands show up in your inbox, then I invite you today to become a super friend and join the DC Squad simply by hitting the subscribe button and dinging the notification bell. And I will see you with the next one. Have an awesome day, super friends. Take care.